Hey guys, Crypto Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. If you're anything like me, when you're buying stuff to do auto guiding and auto guiding is uh, basically the very first upgrade that I suggest to anyone getting started in astrophotography. Uh, but when you get your equipment for auto guiding, typically a small guide scope together with a guide camera, you're not really caring about like the quality of this little guide scope and the characteristics of the camera. This uh, little kit here is the QHY Mini Guider. It's something that I've been using for years and years. I think I got it like 10 years ago. I don't even remember. It's old. The camera is very old tech as well. The sensor is old. The uh, telescope, the guide scope itself is terrible. I mean, it works for guiding, but it's like, you know, a very, very simple thing and it just works. And so I've been using it forever and ever and ever because it was serviceable. And just to be clear, auto guiding for anyone who doesn't know exactly what that is, is when you use a little, uh, little guide scope like this one here. So this is a, a small telescope together with a camera at the end. So this is the camera with the camera sensor inside, inside. And what this does is it's mounted on your main telescope. Your main telescope is taking images of the night sky and this takes an image every second, for instance, and it tracks the stars in there and it reacts if it sees that the stars are drifting away from where they're supposed to be because it means that you're tracking for your main imaging, something is going wrong. So this thing looks at the star, says like, hey, you're deviating, you should be going in this direction. And the main imaging rig, the mount that you use will react to that and correct itself. So this is a very reactive type of uh, feedback loop to the main uh, imaging rig. And the only thing that you want to take care of when you're buying a guide scope and a guide camera is what we call the pixel scale. Basically, how much detail can your guide scope and camera resolve compared to the uh, amount of detail that you're trying to capture with your main telescope and main uh, camera. And this is because if this doesn't see enough details, it will not be able to be aware of very small movements of the stars that it's trying to track that would affect the main imaging rig. So then it becomes inefficient. So that's the really the only consideration that I've ever had when buying a guide scope and a guide camera. But recently I've kind of changed my mind and what made me change my mind is going to a system that we called an off-axis guider. So this is actually um, a, a kind of a prototype of off-axis guider from Tope Tech. Uh, they're a camera maker, but they seem to be going more and more into astronomy astrophotography. I haven't tested this yet, so this is not going to be the topic of the video. But what happens is you see you have a, a tiny little uh, mirror at the top that will redirect light to the main camera. And because of that, you can insert that between your main telescope and your main camera. So you can get the light directly from your main telescope to a camera here placed at the top. When you're doing that, you're using the complete focal length of your main imaging telescope, which is typically much longer. And so it zooms in much more than those tiny guide scopes. What happens in this case is because you're zooming in much more, you have a much narrower field of view for your guide camera. And therefore there are fewer stars available in that narrower field of view for your guide camera to actually keep track of stars within that field of view because if there are no stars there's nothing to keep track of and so with my off access access guider this is the camera i've been using this is a, a tope tech camera with a sensor called the imx 290 monochrome sensor and it has 2.9 micrometer size pixels and it has a, a small one over 2.8 inch uh, sensor and it was perfectly serviceable. I was getting really good guiding figures, meaning like the average deviation from my uh, of my guide stars was around 0.7 arc seconds any given night, which overall is really good and serviceable. But I had some issues sometimes that, especially after something like the Meridian flip. And I sometimes noticed that this guide camera was only able to pick a single star. And when you're doing guiding, especially with high frequency exposure, something like 0.5 seconds or one second, it becomes very important to have multiple stars so that you can average the seeing effects on those multiple stars. Because what's happening when you're guiding, you're trying to keep track of, of stars, obviously, but you have the atmosphere between you your guide camera and the stars themselves. And that amber atmosphere makes the stars flicker and move around a little bit, which can trigger your guide scope to basically follow the atmospheric movements and make your main imaging basically try to follow atmospheric movements for no reason whatsoever, which in the end makes for a poorer quality image. That's, a, that's an example where guiding can hurt your image. 
And so when I had a single star selected after the meridian flip, which is done automatically by my rig while I'm sleeping, so I'm not there to monitor, then my guiding figures become became much worse, around one arc second to 1.2 arc seconds. But I wasn't, you know, too worried because overall my uh, own main imaging rig with the resolution, the, the precision that I need from it is around that one arc second mark. So I, I was fine with that. It was working fine and my end images were good. But still, it means that there's always a little risk that my images will be deteriorated by this uh, guiding issue. So what are the solutions to that? Well, I could simply go for a camera with larger pixels because the larger pixels will capture more light in any given amount of time and also a larger sensor so I can have a larger field of view and therefore hopefully be able to find more stars. But with the current uh, off-axis guider that I'm using, which is the ZW uh, off-axis guider, which I believe has a prism, a small mirror of only eight millimeter uh, size, then even if I use a bigger sensor, a bigger a camera with a bigger sensor, then the field of view is anyway limited by the small size of that prism. Once I use the Topetech uh, prototype that I have, the uh, the size of the prism there is 10 millimeters, so it's going to get better. But right now, that's uh, still a limitation that I have. So I cannot go for larger sensor, larger pixels for my guide camera. And that's where Topetech came to me. And actually several months ago, they had started uh, excitingly uh, talking about a new guide camera slash planetary slash even deep sky object camera based on the Sony IMX662 sensor. So the Sony IMX662 sensor is actually uh, in the camera I got. It's a color sensor. And it's been extremely popular in other cam for with other camera makers like ZW cameras or Player One cameras for planetary astrophotography. One of the main reasons is that it's extremely sensitive to near infrared wavelengths, and near infrared wavelengths are amazing because they are much less sensitive to atmospheric movements. And so, having near infrared sensitivity is great for both planetary imaging and guiding, auto-guiding, because that's when you really want to have the least influence from the atmosphere. On top of that, that sensor has a very high quantum efficiency, meaning it, it is naturally very sensitive to light. And it's, of course, one of the modern sensors from Sony. So it doesn't have any amp glow, giving it pretty much a very flat field. And it has very low read noise as well, even though it is effectively the same sensor size and the same pixel size as the uh, 290 monochrome sensor that I was using for guiding up to now. So honestly, when Topetech reached out to me with that, uh, that camera in mind, which is the Topetech G3M662C, I'll put the links down in the description, I honestly didn't really understand why they were so excited uh, because I would be going from a 290 monochrome sensor to basically a sensor with the same size, same pixel size, but color, which normally is a disadvantage for guiding. So I wasn't expecting to see good results. So here is the camera, by the way. You'll notice that this is a very different form factor than the uh, 662 sensor based camera from other brands. And it can be used for uh, either guiding because you can insert it into an OEG very easily like this. But it also has a proper USB 3 port at the back for USB 3 speeds that with the full resolution of the sensor, I was able with raw format at 8 bit get uh, around 80, 90 frames per second with my laptop. And when I had like the 16 bit uh, mode activated, I was getting 70 frames per second again with my laptop. So this is high frame rate, which is good for planetary. It's much less interesting for guiding. So. I did test this quickly for planetary. It's, it's working great. And I think it's basically the same level as any other IMX662 based cameras for that purpose. But I haven't really seen those cameras being used for guiding. And this is what this is made for. And I went from my average guiding of the, around 0.7 arc seconds to 0.4 or 0.5 arc seconds without any filter. Anytime I was checking the guiding on this uh, camera, I was having multiple stars. And this is on the same target as the 290mm. I actually did a test where, where in the same night, I switched from one to the other. 
on the same target, no other change. And I simply got better guiding results with the 662, even though it is a color camera. And so this is where I was really surprised to see that sensor technology, which we know matters for your main imaging camera, actually also matters for your guide camera. And I feel like the effect will be much less uh, strong on something like a, a guide scope type of setup. But if you're using an OAG, uh, I noticed that it makes quite a bit different, big difference. And I wish that this uh, 662 sensor also came in a monochrome version because I, I feel like we'd get even better results. Although I kind of feel like we, it's very difficult to get better, especially since in Tokyo I have terrible seeing. I, I had, I don't think it's, it can be optimized more than that. So should you uh, run out and buy this camera? Well, of course not. I mean, first, I don't even think it's available for sale right now. Um, I'll have a link, but I, I couldn't see any buy now or whatever uh, on, that, uh, on that page. And if you have a guiding setup that works for you, then there's no need to change it whatsoever. It's just, I was not aware that the camera tech, the actual sensor, even for the, the, the same resolution, same sensor size, we could see such a difference between generations, despite this being color. So on the face of it, at a disadvantage compared to a monochrome sensor with the same pixel size and sensor size. And I know that this sensor has been uh, very popular for planetary astrophotography, and I absolutely can see why. It's just I am absolutely floored to see it perform so well for guiding as well. So if you are having problem with guiding, maybe your camera is not detecting enough stars, you're using an OAG and you have trouble, and the current 662 cameras from like ZW or Player One are too big to fit onto your OAG, then this might be the correct answer. With its form factor, it's really adapted for OAGs, and because it has USB 3, it can be used for planetary as well, which, it, which makes it really two cameras in one, maybe even three cameras in one. I still want to test out uh, how it can do for deep sky, especially on things like galaxies. It, it kind of reminds me of um, when I had to choose uh, back when I was using uh, an eight inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescope for imaging, I was I went with an off-axis guider from Celestron at the time, and I wanted to buy a camera with the 174 sensor, which was a large sensor with large pixels. And I was hesitating between um, ZW and QHY, which both had like this kind of uh, form factor for the camera. But ZW was actually using a USB 2 type of speed, which means that it made that camera not uh, suitable for planetary, whereas QHY was using USB 3. And that's why in the end I went with the QHY way, even though it was slightly more expensive. This is USB 3 as well. And so I'm really happy to see like a, a kind of a jack of all trades type of camera. Obviously, it's not going to be great for deep, deep sky astrophotography, but for planetary and for guiding, seems to be excellent. So now, what do you think about using better cameras for uh, auto guiding? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Do you think that the uh, the biggest difference was the infrared sensitivity or something else? I'm really curious because I'm, I'm really surprised by how much better it is than my 290. I'm almost wondering whether the, the 290 camera I was using was defective because it's really like light night and day. Um, but yeah, please let me know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, while you're going there, leave a like if you're new to the channel and you like this kind of uh, slightly geeky video, uh, you can uh, click subscribe, click that bell icon. And if you're truly wanting to support the channel even more, you can join my Patreon or join this channel as a member. You guys truly make this channel possible. With that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.